Woo, in the new jail. Thriller. City. Ooh, Jack Thriller, yeah. We creep in, Snoop Dogg to the left, Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com, do it all night, hit the website, hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. Yo, 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 and we back, we back, we back, we back, we back, hey man. Yo, T-Rex, man, give me a round of applause real quick. <laughs> get them hands, give me a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. There we go, there we go. Man, we just had to warm up. It's new Jack Thriller City, man. I feel amazing today. And how does everybody feel in here, man? Can I hear y'all? Make, make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Shoot, so let me uh, go ahead and start introducing uh, my co-host today, man. Uh, yo, I got this beautiful young lady. She is a relationship guru. She got her own thing going on, man. Uh, 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 she, she bad as all outdoors. She know what she talking about. She can help you get your relationship together. And guess what? She in a relationship, so it count. Yeah, uh, I want y'all to start clapping right now. Give it up for Amani Talks. Yeah. She got the one thing about it, podcast. And, uh, you know, I got my uh, player partner, my homegirl, my friend, and whatnot. She, she also is the owner of her own radio station and everything. And uh, she's beautiful. She's intelligent. And she's extremely talented. Y'all give it up for the lovely Chelsea Speed. And hey, y'all give it up for the godfather of the crank movement. Like I got told you before, man, I, I got I to gotta give it up for my cousin, man. He, he created the Soldier Boy dance. You know what mm. I'm saying? He created the show to L.O., Get Silly. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He did his thing, Shoot man. Out, snap and roll, burn the wall, that shit. Come crank on. that yank. Come on, now. Any crank song, really, because all of them was just a spin-off of the dance that I made. Come on. you. Hey, come on. And, and guess uh, what? He he patented this shit, too. I patented it. The first person in the world to ever do that. Patented come on, now. Dance, legally own it. Hey, man, shout out to the uh, Secretary of State. Come on, the, <laughs> the leader of the cash count. Y'all give it up a little playboy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Say it again. Thank you, Jack. No, thank you, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, who says uh, uh, nepotism is dead? <laughs> hey, and um, you know, let me go ahead. We got we got we got guests in the building. We have company today. Now, this guy right here, I've known him for a long time. He is a, 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 a he has a face for TV. He has a voice for radio. He is a rapper. He's a comedian. He's an activist. He's a lyricist. He's an MC, and he's one of my best friends in the world. Every time I talk to this guy, you know, he always put me inside a really great mood and let me know that hey, yo, it's a whole nother level. I could do this. You know, you heard him on the Morning Hustle. Now you've heard him on Dish Nation. Now, you've seen him at South by Southwest, and you've seen him at some of the flyest movie premieres in Atlanta, Georgia. Y'all get up for the incomparable head crack with a K. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said a lot there. Hey, man, <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't enough. It no, wasn't enough, bro. I appreciate that. And it makes me realize, like, every time someone reads down, like, the, mm -hmm. the laundry list, it's like, yeah, I do a lot. I feel Jamaican. <laughs> what you mix with though? Yo, I did a 23 and me, and um, I'm like 47% Nigerian. Wow. So I immediately started emailing my family and scammed them out of money. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, like yeah, I'm like I'm like Nigerian. I'm also Congolese. Um, there's a little like uh, British in there, like very small percent. But mm. like it's ill. And the crazy thing, if you ever done a 23 and me, like when you spit in that little tube and mail it mm -hmm. off, right? Like, if you check the app, the stats change. Kind of like, you know, like playing NBA 2K. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, well, last year I was like 36% Nigerian, and now I've increased. Get out of here. Yeah. I leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm almost about to make Jolof rice. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you like Jolof? Yo, so I've never had it in uh. real time. However, I went to Wadada. No, not Wadada. I went to, um, what's that spot? Little That's Quincy Jones' daughter. Uh, that's Kid Dada. Oh, okay, uh, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Seven Nanda. I went to Seven Nanda, and okay. they got, like, a little hot bar over there, and they had Joloff rice, and I'm like, ooh, let me get this rice everybody's been talking about. 
I need to get it from somewhere else. Oh, I went hitting on that. And, and I'm not even sniping. Because like usually when I go to 7-9, nine, I come through with some herbs that make you run faster, jump harder, stroke longer, right? <laughs> but the 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 Jollof rice wasn't as advertised. They say different countries make it different. Do you know uh who? Senegal? No, I'm saying Ghana. Oh. And uh Nigeria. And who, who no, I was saying which one did you eat? I who feel like it? a Korean made it. Oh, the one yeah. I had. Yeah, that's why I didn't say yeah, something. He had some Chinese rice. Oh, no, no. He had some, fr- he had some fried rice. Yeah. I, I strip fried jollof rice. Strip fried. Strip fried. Strip fried. They had an nah, African make it, though. They had an African make it at you. They had an African serve it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Yo, how important was it for you to, like, you know what I'm saying, do that whole Ancestry23andMe.com thing? It was very important because the thing is, you got to know what to eat, right? You got to eat right for your blood type. You know, a lot of people feel like, all right, let me jump on this fad diet and whatnot and do what I do. Mm -hmm. However, you don't know where your people come from. Mm -hmm. So maybe you trying to be a vegetarian and your blood really more so calls or your DNA background calls for you more so to like, you should be eating bison or like raw tuna or, you know what I mean? You got to figure it out. So a lot of times people be on this health journey and they actually making themselves sicker because they just following fads and trends. Hey, you you O positive? Um, I think I am. I I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know I eat a quarter. Um, if you, if you O positive, red meat, but not like cheap red meat. You're supposed to eat like bison. I'm O positive. Mm, See, bison, Mm -hmm. you can do a little bit of pork too. You know what I mean? Oh, I do a lot of bit of pork. Yeah, I felt like, you know, if they had, like, better fire in biblical times, they'd have been more on board with eating that. Mm, mm. Oh, hold on, hold on. When you say not cheap, oh. cheap, um, like, uh, uh, a red I'm meat, a what do you mean? Type. Well, you know, there's, like, levels to the type of beef you could get. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to throw no potential sponsors under the bus, but there's a particular place that makes tacos that maybe be selling D-quality meat, right? Mm-hmm. right. You mm-hmm. might even be eating ground-up kangaroo. However, kangaroo fuck? apparently <laughs> tastes amazing because I love getting tacos from this place. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not the highest quality amount. It's not the hi- highest quality of meat you could be eating it from there. Yeah. It's just something that will do because it's after 11 it's p.m. Yeah. Very. Mm-hmm. If they had a White Castle, I'd be eating that too. Hey, man, um, I want to say, uh, we, me, you and I were talking earlier this week, you know, um, Sorry about your dog, man. How's your dog doing? Yo, my Tell him what happened to your dog. Yo, man, so <laughs> my dog got attacked by a coyote. Because oh apparently I live in a neighborhood where niggas be playing Jumanji. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be all, there'd be all types of unexplainable wildlife in my neighborhood. It's like, yo, how the fuck is a rhino out here? You know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> I let my dog outside for just a little bit of time, What's right? Dog? It's a shih tzu. Oh. Why you say, oh, like that? Yeah, what was that? A coyote or shit too? You look disappointed when you oh, turn your oh, head. Like, yeah. I, I was thinking he's like French bulldog. Or nah, like, because like when you get a dog oh. that's like a human sized person, they take human sized shits. Right. In your yard, okay. man. Yeah, that's true. Yo, that's- my friend stayed with me for like six weeks and he had like, I think it was like a, a Labrador or something like that. Whatever it was, it was a big dog, right? Uh. And my, my yard guy was like, yo, these are such first world problems. Uh, my yard guy was like, hey, man, um, Whatever that new dog is, can you have that person pick up the poop? Because it's like, yo, I keep stepping it. Because, like, it just be, like, large poops when you got them big-sized dogs. So I want, like, a small dog, which I have. But anyway, back to the story. Um, I came in. I let my dog out. I went and smoked half a joint and came back upstairs and made some food. Ate that food. Then I made some more food. Ate that food. And then I'm going upstairs, and it's, like, midnight. And I'm like damn, Lucy hasn't came back in yet, because usually I'll let her out, and she'll, like, paw at the door and walk right in when she's ready. And as soon as I thought about it, my lady came downstairs and was like, yo, the cop's outside. And I'm like, damn, Lucy got hit by a car. I'm just assuming that's what happened. And she's like, nah, like, the neighbor found my dog bleeding in their driveway, and they knocked on my door, and the door just opened up. So they thought some terrible breaking and entering shit happened in the house. So they called the police, because they thought we all got murdered. However, it was my dog who got half murdered by this coyote. So when I, they put him in a little basket for me, and I rushed her to the hospital. When I tell you my dog looked like Bushwick Bill on the We Can't Be Stopped album cover <laughs> of the Ghetto Boys, <laughs> like her eye was hanging out, and she was like all bloody. Like, yo, it was breaking my heart. She was making sounds on the way to the hospital I never heard her make before, so I'm applying pressure. I'm driving fast. And then also, too, there's not a lot of, like, 
there's not a Grady for, for dogs. Mm, no. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. After midnight. So you got to drive, like, you know, to a different part of town to get that, that high quality service. You know, mainly when there's more white people. There's some, so, rich, there's some rich nigga problems right <laughs> here. And you say you, you had to hold the dog eye in? I didn't have to hold the dog eye in, but it was just hanging out. Like, you know, like a kid outside. Hey, I've been there. Uh, I know how that is. Go ahead. Yeah, see, the struggle's real. So got it there. And they, they, you know, they came out. It's like how you be watching a show like ER, the doctors come out. Like, yo, stat, get some blood over here. They was doing all that work. And they actually got her calm, right? Mm. Then I stayed for about an hour, went home. Next day I get a phone call. It's like, yeah, we did all we could do for her here. We need you to take it to this other place. And then I took it to this other place. And when it was all said and done, I could have bought a Kia, but my dog's alive. God oh. dang. It's That's a, a high bill. bill. Oh, the bill is higher than giraffe nuts, yeah. my friend. Pets are expensive. Like, because they understand they got you by the nuts mm. because that's your fur baby. Mm. And the crazy thing is I was talking to people about it, and it's like, yo, man, how old's your dog? And I'm like, 15. And I'm like, you're, pet, you're paying that. They're like, 15 in dog years is like 82. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they said the exact same age. Mm. And I don't even know if that's accurate dog year. Yeah. But, yeah, so short version... Uh, my dog's gonna need an eye patch. They had to remove two ribs, but uh, she's alive. And you know, walking the around the house. The ate your dog ribs. It didn't eat the ribs, <laughs> but like when it bit into it, I guess it cracked some ribs because I guess they really like bite things with like you know a very ferocious force. And uh, yeah, it cracked. They had to remove two ribs. Uh, she lost her uh, her right eye, and um, and now I'm on Etsy trying to find like eye patches. Which is tricky, because I, I had that shit in the cart, and they was like, yo, what is the circumference of the dog's head? And then I thought about every time I was in math class, it's like, I ain't gonna need to know this shit as an adult. <laughs> I wish I knew that shit. Because like, I've been trying to figure out two days how to measure the circumference of my dog's head. Bro, you, finna really, you, you, you really gotta go get an eye patch for your dog? My nigga, that eye is gross. Oh, wow. Like, yo, because it's like, because they removed, the first hospital, they removed the eye, but they didn't sew it shut. Oh. Because they was like, yo, this is the worst of our, uh, this is the least of our problems at this mm. moment, right? Mm. So I'm like, okay. And I didn't realize it until I got her home a week later, and then the, that eye started opening up like a garage door and shit, mm. right? So then you start seeing, like, the, you know, remember as a kid, you used to flip your eyelids? That's how it looked like all times, <laughs> but it's a dog. Oh, God damn, I got the poltergeist dog. So, yeah. Shit. But, you know, but I, but I think she's going to be all right, And it's though. a girl. It's, it's a, a girl. That's a tough little lady. That's a right tough there. little girl. Yeah, like, I'm a, that's going to be like my, but once I get the eye patch on the door, you're going to see me with that dog all the time. Got you. Got you. Oh. It's, it's a hell you. of a mascot. <laughs> yeah. Word, because I, I feel like the eye patch going to give us some edge. That's true. Definitely. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. def mm -hmm. You know what? Having wear eye patches, it definitely builds character. It's made me stronger. Okay. I had it, you know, even when I, when I came back on Wild and Out, um, back in um, uh, two, uh, 2021 and whatnot, that was my whole thing for reinventing myself. Like, you know what? I'm gonna do these seasons with an eye patch. So, what made you like pivot away from it? Hmm. Uh, I, I was just going, just going raw dog, you know, with the the glass eye, you know, for the first uh, like five, six seasons. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I just I felt like when I moved back home from New York, when I moved back home here. Um, I just wanted to, you know, just switch it up a little bit and see what it looked like. And I wanted to know if people would still know it was Jack with an eye patch. Did it In change In my it? mind, I think that I look different with an eye patch on. But nah, my boy. <laughs> niggas knew it was me the whole time. You thought you was in disguise? I like thought I was in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was in disguise. Hey, yo, check this out. This is a crazy story here, crap. Yo, so I'm on this, I'm on, I'm on, we, we had lunch, you know what I'm saying, like right in between shows at Wild and Out, and I got on a, um, I, I have on a mask. A COVID uh, joint? A COVID mask, and, and I got on an eye patch, and I got on a hoodie, mm -hmm. and whatnot, and then uh, Jewel Santana walk in, he said, hey, what's up, Jack? I'm like, <laughs> the fuck you knew it was me? <laughs> <laughs> he said, nigga, ain't this, this ain't your first season on, uh, on Wild and Out, I, I know if anybody with one eye, is you. And so I, I could completely felt like I looked like a different nigga. And the nigga had been in jail for a long time, too. So I thought I was going to surprise him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nigga knew it was me. Damn. Um, I, I think it was like, you know, it starts with the body type. Because it's not a lot of people. Somebody said that my body is different. Like, yeah. my body. 
It my is. body is my body. There's like very few people, like, you know, if you you could do a silhouette, right? You remember how like when Alfred Hitchcock used to come on uh, Get all the fuck shit. out of here. Like, and it's yeah, like I'm you don't done. even have to see him. Like, yo, that's Alfred Hitchcock. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's dope. I mean, you famous <laughs> enough to be identified by your by your silhouette. You in a good space. Get the fuck out of here! It's like you, flavor flav, yeah. and like who, who else? <laughs> silhouette. Like, just really stand out like Wendy that. Williams. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Uh, Wendy Williams, yeah, that's a good call too. Yeah, that's like, funny, man. You fucking my head up right now. You bro. should play a game with guests when they come through. Like throw some silhouettes of people, but like weird niggas. Like yo, <laughs> which franchise boy is this? <laughs> 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 but it's just silhouettes. <laughs> that's hard. <all right. laughs> is this Big Sam or Little Bo for these jobs? Like, <laughs> like, what you want? Like, that's the one. Keep people on their toes, man. That's the one, man. Hey, shout out to uh, Big Sam and Lil Bo, man. I got to bring them now that you just said that. Yo, man, they were one of the first Atlanta people I met when I moved to Atlanta. Get the oh, fuck out of here. It's like, yo, I live here now. Like, I met, I met like a- The East Side yeah, boy. And I didn't even meet him together like a set. I mm. met him like- <laughs> <laughs> I met him loose. <laughs> Come on, what are the chances? Slim. Very slim. Because usually, like, you got to see- the, the people with the main guy you know them for, but mm -hmm. like I watched enough like Rap City and all the mother videos, like Big Sam, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing at Costco? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where the fuck you saw Lil Bow at? Probably in front of a gas station or something. I was probably getting gas or something. Maybe he's coming out with some White Owls. I don't even know. It was okay. just like some random. It was just another one of those oh shit moments. Like oh, part shit. of my Welcome to Atlanta pack. Oh man. Hey, man, I got some charismatic group of uh, people here. Man, they got some great questions for you. What's up, folks? <laughs> so I'm curious. You have talked a lot about your, your, your struggles with mental and that affecting your career, especially with the morning hustle. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you took some time away from it. So can you kind of talk about what that kind of did for you and did that put you in a more creative space? Oh, take yeah. Take time for your mental or, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even take time away from it. I quit. Uh. Um, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> I, I love the honesty. Yeah, no, for real, for real. Um, you know, sometimes like, you ever been like in a toxic environment and- uh, Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, I lived in New York. Okay, okay. If you and if you don't love it like that, yes, New York is a pressure cooker that is making a panini out of your ass the yes. second you step off that plane coming in from LaGuardia or JFK, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Um, and like everything I was doing to try to make it a livable, workable environment mm -hmm. for me, it uh, I was just getting weird pushback from different directions, and it's just like it got to a point where it's like, hey, listen, man, I know what my intent is, I know what I come to do every day, mm -hmm. I know how creative I am, and I know how far I got in doing me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna let somebody who's not me tell me how to do me or stifle my creativity okay. and make some shit that was supposed to be a level up feel like a prison sentence. Mm. And that's where I was getting to. Like when you find yourself like on Sunday night before you go to work, like swinging at the air, like Anxiety. Cuba Gooden Jr. at Boys in the Hood, <laughs> you know that's not some healthy shit. Mm. I made my weed man a lot of money. <laughs> like <laughs> buying from him just to like oh. calm and like, you know what I mean? Like, and the crazy thing is, like, when you think about like mental health and things that you do to mm -hmm. um, pacify it, it's weird because, like, I did ayahuasca really before I started smoking weed. Oh, really? I, I went in reverse. Like, I, I fought the final stage boss and then went back to level one. <laughs> you know what I mean? How did you even hear about that shit? Um, so I'm a big Mike Tyson fan. And okay. he, on his podcast, was talking about uh, him doing the toad, which is DMT, which mm. you could either, like, smoke it or... Is, hold on. When you say doing the toad, because when I heard him say that, well, I'm up here thinking that, like, he, like, really had a toad frog. They extract the venom from the toad. Okay. And there's different ways you can get it. But, like, I couldn't... I don't, I don't trust people enough, especially locally, to be like, yo, I got DMT. Like, yeah, nigga, you about to do fentanyl and die. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, like, if it ain't weed, I don't trust... I it. And, and I'm still leery on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bruh. 2023? Hello. Come Fact, on, though. Man. That's why I buy from one guy and then dispensaries might go out of town to places that have them, right? Hey, yeah. motherfuckers be too, too adventurous with that shit, but they won't go get the COVID shot. <laughs> <laughs> make it make sense. So I couldn't find DMT, and I'm like, well, what's the most natural way we can do it? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I right, go to the source, ayahuasca. And every time I seen somebody on a TV show doing ayahuasca, it looks like they're having the worst time ever. And I'm like, well, yo, if I can, if I could thug through that, everything else would be cake. 
So I had some amazing experiences. I've gone on three ayahuasca retreats and participated in 11 ceremonies. I think I, I felt like I died once and uh, I had an ego death my very first time. I did it. And it really just taught me to like, hey, man, you don't really got to serve no masters that don't serve you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can fight the good fight and like do what you want and and try to push through. But at the end of the day, you keep coming to try to get an answer. And I keep telling you what the answer is. The answer, this shit ain't for you. And everybody ain't worth saving mm -hmm. in all situations. So after a while, it got to the point where it was time to like look at, you know, putting the quarters in the machine to continue the game. And I'm like, you know what? There's not an amount of money you could pay me to mm -hmm. keep me doing this and working under these conditions. So, man, I'm ghost. Wow. Wow. That's dope, actually. You made yeah. the best decision for you. You know what I'm saying? We talk about self-care and all that, but you did that, especially in the industry. And I feel like a lot of people are scared to make moves like that in the industry, even if it means turning that dollar down. So is there anything about that situation that you would change if you could? Um... That's Knowing what I know, it. because there was so many things involved behind the scenes and with people who should have been involved that wasn't and who got moved off the chessboard, I don't think there was nothing I could have changed. The only Because, like, everything happens for a reason. I was supposed to do that for that duration of time that I did it. Because, like, you know, we was able to do some fantastic things mm -hmm. during my three-year run over there. Like, and we became number one in Atlanta for a few books. It was number one in D.C., number one in, like, Richmond and a whole bunch of other cities. So... I got what I needed to get out of that. Like I proved I could take a team to the top. You know what I mean? And we could have stayed there longer if y'all would have shut the fuck up and let me do what the fuck I do. Big facts. You know what I mean? And yo, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fist fight a nigga hand with my hand handcuffed in my belt loop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Give me the tools I need to win, and give me some people who ain't trying to sabotage shit. You know, mm -hmm. behind the curtain. So, it, so when I know I'm fighting a fixed fight, bow out. Yeah, you know, yeah. in between rounds, I'm a dip. And, you go to my car. Hey, you know you know what's crazy <laughs> about that, man? Uh, hey, Crack, I always say, but you know, if the fight gonna be fixed, I gotta be the one fixing it. Hello. From from, from here on out, I'm the one that's gonna be cheating. Yeah. You know, uh, somebody once famously said, I don't play no game that I can't win. That's mm. right. I try to play the games that I ain't supposed to win. And sometimes winning is <laughs> taking the controller, <laughs> wrapping it up and going away mm. with it. And at the end of the day, I hope y'all can swim. Mm. You know, mm. Amani, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was going to ask, you left the Ricky Smiley morning show to do that new project. And mm. so now do you feel like, damn, like I left because I'm trying to like create something for myself and y'all niggas fucked it up for me. Like, do you regret like I should have stayed or everything happens for a reason and everything. But do you feel like, damn, like I left a good thing to do this and y'all niggas fucked it up for me? Like, well, let me tell you how dope God is. Right. So as my contract was ending and there was talks about Ricky going on the adult contemporary side um, to take over for Tom. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, shit, it's 2019. 2020 seemed real good and spiritual. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a year off. I'm just going to tour all mm -hmm. 2020. Because what could go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, yo, the they whole world shut didn't. down. <laughs> and when they threw that opportunity to like start, you know, be a part of a new show, mm -hmm. I, I went with it because like, yo, I would have been that's what happened to me mm. remember i came to your show and uh, um because i was uh, promoting the martin tour i was on tour with martin yep right man, when we... just two fucking shows into it mm. then covid hits man hey now i have finally made it <laughs> <laughs> i'm on tour with martin lawrence Twenty thousand seaters all of man and then fucking COVID, man. Mm -hmm. But you got you had let me come up to your, your morning mm -hmm. show and promote the shit, man. And, uh, yo, I I can't tell you how happy I was at that particular point in that day in my life, bro. Because I, I had been working up to that shit forever. Yo, we was happy to have you, and I was happy to see it happen for you because I've seen your journey and seen everything that you've done behind the scenes too to get to the point of where you at now, and even the growth for the podcast situation. Y'all can't see everything, but he was in a lot smaller of a room than this one a couple months ago. <laughs> and to see the growth on, on that level, the man, it's just like, hey, man, bet on yourself and always just, just go for the gusto. So with that being said, uh, I don't think I would have been happy going to an adult contemporary format like that because I am just, I still operate with the mentality of a 27-year-old mm. and I didn't want to hear the whispers in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still, like, about 
this 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 street culture like yeah. yo who, yo who who got a dope record out you know mm -hmm. like and I I just didn't want to I didn't want to be in that suit and tie crowd yet you know what I mean mm -hmm. so okay. I was like yeah I want to still be out here like doing hood rat shit with my friends yeah I love you it. had to make that move yeah but you know like I mean I think everything happens for a reason and like I think if you'd have went on that Martin tour um I don't know I would have blew up <laughs> I, I did two dates and I, I I was I was getting off stage and. I was like, yo, I'm that nigga. And yo, after at the end of this year, I'm gonna be rich as fuck. Oh, uh, yeah, yo, a TV show is next. My own sitcom. Yo. But like, I don't know, but what if you would have went on that tour, you would have got like roofied by Michelle Wolf or something? Damn. Then there's that, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I didn't think, think about that. I think yeah. everything, I, and not saying that she's out here roofing people. I'm a big fan of her comedy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like there's a reason why that didn't pop off the way it was supposed to. Yeah. And maybe yeah. you got to take the scenic route yeah. a little yeah. bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can really, shit, next time, there's going to be people trying to get on the Jack Thriller tour. Mm. To be honest with you. There you go. <laughs> You're seeing it now. Look at <laughs> That's a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> Man, thanks, head crack. Yo, hindsight, right? Yo, there's somebody sitting in a garage or in a, a basement of their parents' house right now, hoping they can come on a Jack Thriller show. And real, real, real talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people. It's always a matter of perspective. See, this, this why I love you. This why I love you, man. You know, every time I talk to you, you all always a breath of fresh air. They're always upbeat, man. Have you always been the rock for everybody, bro? Always the rock. No, because not everybody is doing dope things. Like, you know, like, if you was <laughs> over here fucking up, I'd be like, damn, man, this is where we at, Jack? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In high school, you was the man, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yeah. But, I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, I, I just salute people that continue to push through despite the odds and, like, the fact that you've always been, um, very transparent. Like the dopest story that Jack ever told me is like, I think it was like you thought two chains was trying. Who was it? Was you thought it was trying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he definitely thought two chains was trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. And like most people in this masculine world of hip hop and comedy and just being ultra black would never admit that they were afraid for their life. Very true. And yeah, the fact true. that my man is so transparent, <laughs> and everything he do is like, yo, I fuck with that. You know what I yeah, mean? Because he was so upset. And I, the problem was, I wasn't upset. And I was like, this nigga is going. I'm gonna get killed by. Fucking two chain. Oh my God. I, I, I was honored and terrified at the same time. I mean, at least it was an upper alphabet rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. then that's that. Yeah. Hey, dog. Before before uh, Will Smith, it was me. <laughs> before Chris Rock, it was me. Yo, and then you like even like you know because I called you for advice when I was getting ready to do the fight. Mm, you know mm, what I'm saying? Mm, like, mm. yo, you be out here doing brave shit, man. Yeah, hey, pat yourself yeah, on the back. That's right. I got my ass whooped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, wait. Oh. Boxing match. It was a boxing match. Yeah. yeah. I, boxing I fought match. in. But see, you did, a, you did a celebrity boxing match. I had fought in a BX Fight Club. Nah, I was he fought a, a real boxer a too real now, though. Underground. Yeah. Nah, fight. he fought Kimbo Slice Jr. Yeah, they were setting yeah. me up for the Okie Doke. Hold on, wow. you oh. did fight Kimbo Slice Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and got a second round knockdown. Because mm. I put in the fucking work. Like, my kids is in the fucking audience. Mm. Oh, like, yeah, you can't. <laughs> Like, I ain't gonna get sunned in front of my son. Can't lose in front of the kids. <laughs> I didn't put in the work. I trained for two hours. <laughs> and then I, I had a slice of pizza before the fight. Oh, and, and a Red Bull. Man, that motherfucker beat the mashed potatoes out of me. <laughs> you were trading for a bar fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I had that motherfucker for like the first, first round and a half. And then all of a sudden, my arm stopped working. And I'm like, no. <laughs> man, what the fuck? Bro, like that's that what... motherfucker hit me in my good eye. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, like what most people fail to realize about fights, when you think about fights you saw when you was in school, mm -hmm. in your head, these were like... 30 minute epics like Rocky and in your shit. mind. Most fights be like 47 mm -hmm. seconds. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes. you know, and it's not professional. Yes. So when you get into a situation, because even my first time sparring, mm -hmm. like I went in there fighting mm -hmm. and was getting punched a lot. Yes. Because <laughs> I was sparring with a boxer. Yeah. So, you know, you realize you don't want to get hit like that again. And then next time you come back to the gym, you figure out, all right, cool, let me do this shit better. Yeah. And you know, and it, it takes practice and then you build your lungs up to be able to go the distance and um and all that stuff. Shout out to my trainer Pepper uh from Pepper Boxing, man, because he he prepared me to like go toe to toe. Cause he was even like, ah oh, no, nah, don't take the fight, kid. That's mm -hmm. like, but yo, I wanna do it. Like, 
Ain't no How did that come about? Like, yeah, that's a great <laughs> I'm so like, what? Yo, it started like in 1990 something when they used to show celebrity boxing matches on Fox. Oh, I think okay. uh, I think Todd Bridges fought Screech. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> no, no, okay, no, I remember that. that. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought he fought with Vanilla Ice. Nah, <laughs> I think you no, know, it's Vanilla Ice. That might have been Screech a, had whooped somebody else's ass. No, Jeez. Screech rip whooped Ro- Rorschach. You're right. Yeah. Screech whipped Rorschach. Todd Bridges for somebody. It wasn't Vanilla it, Ice. It was Vanilla Ice. I swear. Google it. Somebody Google it real quick. She got a whole computer. Huh? Todd Bridges for Vanilla Ice? Yeah, he whooped his ass. I got... Shout out to in-house Google. That's what's up. Come so, on, Shay. So watching those as I'm a teenager, it's like, y'all want to do this shit one day. And then it went away. And then it came back in the middle of the pandemic. And I'm like, yo, I want to do this shit. Mm-hmm. Time's running out. Yeah. If I'm going to do it, I got I to gotta hurry up and do it. Because you get to a certain point in your life where your, your bones turn into Kit Kats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to do that before yeah. everything got brittle. And um, my manager reached out to uh, Damon, who runs Celebrity yeah. Boxing. Damon. And Damon Felder. Damon Felder, yeah. And um, yo, we got it in. And like the game plan was like, I thought I was going to fight like another like radio DJ. And I was even putting the feels out out there. Like, hey, man, you want to fight? You know, I was asking uh, nice too. Hey, hey, would you like to fight in a celebrity mm-hmm. boxing match? I don't know if we do yeah. it for the kids or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and and nobody wanted it, right? And I respect it because like it's some crazy, it's some crazy person shit. Like anybody over thirty trying to get into the ring to fight for the first time, mm-hmm. you're either bored or you like you've completed all your main missions in life and you about side quest. Now you tell me. <laughs> so I, I, I needed you back in 2016. <laughs> oh, I, I man, I would have been like your bagger Vance. Like, bro, listen, man, you sure you want to do pizza? You know what I mean? I'd have, I'd have been there. But so after reaching around and like, you know, asking out people, it was like, yo, got somebody for you from loving hip hop. I'm gonna leave his name out of it though. Um, so I'm like, hell yeah. So I'm training to fight a six foot two guy. So all my sparring partners are six foot two, you know what I'm saying? Throwing punches with evil intent. But yo, guess what? I'm getting good at taking them, I'm getting mm-hmm. good at blocking them and giving it back. And then that person pulls out of it because they heard about how I was going in the gym, uh, you know? And uh, and then people was also making up some shit about, actually, you were involved in this shit, Jack. Oh, you, you was involved. I got to know. I'm, yo, uh, yo, 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 was in this guy's ear. He was in this guy's ear piping it up. Yo. I already know what it is. <laughs> He was wow. piping it hey, up. You know what's crazy? I, I, I was over here like, oh, shit. Get real sensitive. Talking about me. Hey, it all came together in full circle. Yeah. But, however, I'm glad I didn't have to fight. Because I like him. Yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. good dude. Hey, I told him that you was going to beat the stuffing out of that. <laughs> you, do you know who the fuck that is? Yo, head crack don't play. But hey, you know no, what? You but, my boy. But that you was, my boy. That was some God level shit you did. Because like at the end of the day, I didn't want to fight nobody whose number I had in my phone. Because to throw a punch at another human being, that's a personal thing. Come on, yeah. bro. And when people, like, fight, and yeah. even with some of these battle rap yeah. situations, like, yeah. y'all niggas going to Fridays after this? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, hell no. What? I know who I'm So, um, so yeah, when he when they took him off the table, then it's like, well, damn, who the fuck am I going to fight now? Like, I've already been training for three months, and he started throwing all these other random names at me. There's, like, some niggas sold vitamins. Uh, <laughs> and I made nicknames for everybody. It's like, it was King Vitamin. King Vitamin. <laughs> there was, there was uh, Love little, that cereal. Little Big Head. It was another dude who I was going to oh, fight. Oh, shit. And then, hey, Big Head. And then Damon came through with, uh, with Kimbo Slice Jr. And I'm like, yo, no. but he's a fighter fighter. Yeah. Like, I watched him mangle some motherfucker in UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought about it for like 24 hours. And I'm like, you know what, though? If I fight him and lose, no one expected me to win. Cause I'm, guy, that. Cause I'm the guy from Dish Nation. That's right. Who used to fight a lot when he was a kid. Mm. But I'm, no one needs to know that. Yeah. But if I do it and win, or at least get a knockdown in that classic picture, mm-hmm. it's forever. That's right. Like the, mm-hmm. like That's the Ali Liston yeah, knockdown. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I right, don't go in there to kill, go in there to survive and That's win. Right. So I studied, I, like I studied his fight tapes and just figured out how he moved, how he keeps his hands, how can I block and defend this? And it all came together. You're like, because I think in the first round, we tripped over each other's feet because I'm left-handed, and I think he's left-handed too. So that was the only time I really went down. And then in the second round, he was coming in with something, and I just caught him clean, and boom, got the knockdown. Unfortunately, he got back up, 
And so I had to, you know, I said I had to keep it going for another round. And the third round, we was just like, you know, just trying to jab and get it off. But at the end of the day, like the streets felt like I won that. But to me, winning was not counting the ceiling lights, you know, and just yeah. surviving it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like I wasn't trying to do it again. I got the picture. Yeah. Pitch is dope. Pitch, hey. is, pitch is in the gym in my basement. Like, you know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. <laughs> hey, it, and, now, what is it like for you when you had first got inside that ring? Everybody's surrounded. You see all these cameras, and the lights is going crazy. Yep. What's going through your mind? It's the most surreal thing ever because it's like, yo, this is what you, uh, what you built up for. Yeah. And by this time, like, I like, had already did a bunch of ayahuasca retreats and was like, actually microdosing. So, like... You I was wasn't. I wasn't afraid. Of, no, I, I wasn't microdosing for the fight. That's some crazy shit. Oh, okay. But okay. like my my confidence and my 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 fearlessness mm -hmm. level was just like through yeah. the roof. Like okay. I wasn't scared at all because I was yeah. in Miami like two days before the fight just yeah. to like you know just get let my body settle get mm -hmm. used to being in a new environment. And I was I was calm, man. I was I was calm as a, as a killer. Mm. And and when it worked and when it worked out the way it did, they called it a draw. And at the end of the day, like, hey man, that's good enough for me. That's, that's a good win. Enough. Yeah. No, for real, that's, that's a, a win. win. Yeah. That's a win. Every, every fight yeah. I ever lost, I said it was a tie. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, let me tell you something, yo, here, Craig. When when I had went and fought this dude at BX Fight Club, mm. one, one, um, it was Craig, cause up. Uh, uh, Remy Ma, she okay. she had uh, she opened up the fight. She came out and performed. She was came fresh out of jail, and this was her first performance. Fat Fat Joe was there. The whole cast of Power. Shaq is goddamn towering over everybody and shit. And I'm the main event that night. I'm in the middle of like, man, what the fuck am I doing? It, it was like I had an out of body experience once I got into the ring, and it wasn't no no way to turn back. But if I could do it all over again, mm -hmm. I would have definitely pulled my dumb ass out that fucking ring. <laughs> Yo, so when it's all over, out of all those famous people you just named, who said something to you first? Oh, let me tell you who called me, man. Uh, uh, Royster59 called me, and he had Eminem on the phone. And he, <laughs> they, was at, they was trying to see if I was all right. <laughs> Eminem said, hey, man, you should keep on going. You just need to work on your footwork. And I'm like, I don't want to fight no more. I don't, don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. So Fat Joe, who was actually there, said nothing? No, oh, he was laughing his ass off the whole time. He, like, literally fell on the floor. They was, they, uh, they was, I was doing my thing, like I said, the first round. I'm throwing the dude down and all that shit. And <laughs> punching him and shit. And I'm going throwing the wild stuff. Because I can fight. But I can't box, mm. and it's such a difference. It's it, a difference. It Technique. took it took me a few weeks to figure that out. I learned how to yeah. box after the fight. <laughs> it's crazy how that works, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's levels. <laughs> yeah, like. and by that time, because see what the deal is, what 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 fucked me up? The dude had to touch my retina. Oh god. And that's why I'm going through this little eye thing right now. Cause he hit me in my good eye while I was trying to get my arm up. I was trying to quit the fight. I'm like, yeah, uh, get, <laughs> yo, throw the towel in, throw the towel in. And it, the referee kept on asking me, are you sure? I said, yes. He said, why? I was like, cause this nigga, about, I'm about to die. I'm about to fucking die. Stop the fight. And while he's, while I'm saying that shit, dude is walking towards me and hits me in my good eye and everything turns purple. Everything turns purple, and I think that if everything is okay, but it was something that was like progressed over time yeah. and whatnot, because I didn't go get it, treat it right then. Because you think you're okay. It's like I people, thought I was okay. It's I like was... people get into an accident, like, I'm good. Yeah. You got a whole concussion. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so now, uh, you know, because a lot of people was wondering why, uh, why I was like, you know, having problems with my eyesight right now, mm. and, I, and I'm, uh, it's taken me like a year and a half to heal. That's because I had got the treatment later on, and too too late. Got Not you. too, yeah, that was way too late. That, and that's us, that's us as a people. Like, we wait till shit is, like, broken. Like, yeah. Till all the shopping cart wheels on our body are broken before we, like, go see help, man. Mm -hmm. Like, man, if you sniffle for more than two days, man, you need to go talk to somebody. And, and mind you, this is the same uh, injury that um, Earl Spence had. Oh, what a, it's a buckle over his eye. He detached retina and all that. That's why the fuck he he lost. He couldn't see. It didn't even see. Like it, they be talking about all these people that they cloned. I felt like they cloned Errol Spence that Me night too. because he was not fighting. He like wasn't his himself. Normal self. Yeah. I mean, Bud Crawford is that dude. Yeah, he is. However, that dude. I just thought I was gonna see more from Errol that night. But I I think that we might be we might be jumping to conclusions on 
on on Crawford being that dude, you know, because you know they talk about this whole Mayweather situation, Mayweather versus Crawford. I think that's a stretch. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't I don't care. I know that Mayweather is like forty six years I'm forty six years old, mm-hmm. but he's still fucking Mayweather. His reflexes is still. I'm I'm pretty sure he can duck all that shit. I mean, if there was ever two people who really deserve to fight each other at this point in their life and career, because, like, I mean, like, Bud... You want to see that? I'm down to watch anybody fight at this point. (laughs) Even if it's people who don't even box. I just like watching people fight. Really? I I get a kick out of it, especially when it's, like, sanctioned. Because, like, watching club fights, you know, you got... uh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, But, like, I, I miss the days of, like, you remember, like, Tough Man? Yes. Yo! I remember one time I went to a Tough Man event. You went with Huh? You went before? Hell yeah. Okay. This is why I still live in Dallas. And it took 45 seconds for them to name all the things that this guy had done. Two-time world, blah, 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 blah. And then the other guy he was fighting, he's like, this guy is a bouncer at Club Dada. <laughs> Yo, the bouncer washed that dude, uh, man. Oh like, I think his kids left like, like before they... They even made sure he was okay. He got fucked up so bad. Like, mm. it was like, shit, man. Like, anybody could get it. You know what I mean? Like, if you know what you're doing. And I just like watching unprofessional people. I like I like watching, yeah, like, not professional people fight. It's funny. How did you get into, uh, just on a pivot, let, let's go, I want, because uh, I know you got to go and whatnot. Oh, uh, so, I'm in but, the what's, uh, how did you, what's your origin story, your origin superhero story of becoming a radio personality? All right, so... Uh, the year was 19, no, 2000. And me, on the dot. Yeah, 2000 on the dot. I mean, sh- let's go even f- before that. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. When I was in high school, there used to be a station called 100.3 Jams. And they had this contest where, like, if you uh, won their Know Your History rap contest, you won like $1,000 in studio time at this studio where the time was like $35 an hour, but what they failed to tell you is because it was a promotional contest, now the rates were $70 an hour, so <laughs> I thought I had way more time than I did. Like, yo, but anyway, uh, we won that contest, and then I knew where the radio station was now. So then they started doing this thing called the roll call, where you can call up and like, you know, the people would be like, uh, what's your name, where you calling from, who's on the roll call, about to get dumped, and people would say their name and something about themselves, right? So one day I was like, I'm going to call up, but I'm going to diss the person that went before me, and I'm going to say something about the person who's about to rap next that they won't even be prepared for. So I used to just be just zinging them and zinging them. And, zinging. and then it, it got to a point where they started giving out prizes for it. So I started winning so many prizes on a roll call. It's like, yo, we're not mailing it to you no more. Come, <laughs> come get it. So I would go up to the station and get it. And then when I go up there, it'd be like, yo, you want to go on the air with Easy Street? And I'm like, hell yeah. Easy Street's like a, a, ra- a legendary radio personality who's in D.C. now. And so I'm hanging out with Easy Street and Lisa Lisa and some other people from like that pocket mm-hmm. of time. And this planted the seeds and people up there knowing me, like Russ Parr, who's like, you know, another Russ like, Parr. you know, wow. super talent. Mm-hmm. And um, a few years that, that summer, I was going to graduate from high school and start interning up there. Like if I graduated June 2nd, the station flip format June 3rd and went to like, <laughs> adult contemporary R&B, and like, so there went my internship, right? But years later, uh, a new station came in town. Me and my homies was at a party. He was like, yo, there's this radio station. You don't got no DJs. Yo, let's go to the studio, make a tape, and act like this is what our show sound like. We turned the tape in, and he's like, yo, y'all want to be our night show? And the rest was history. We ended up being number one. We ended up, like, doing all types of crazy contests and stuff, and it just sucks because it wasn't the era... YouTube came out a little bit after we got the ball rolling. And by the time YouTube became a big thing, I had left that show. They took me from that show and put me with Ricky to do mornings. Mm. So a lot of the dope shit that we did didn't really get properly documented. I got the cassettes. I guess I could run it. Like We did this whole thing one time where like <laughs> we promoted it for two weeks. It was like this. Uh, so if, it was, if, it, if Pac died in 96, 2003, it was the seven-year anniversary of Tupac's death. We took an old interview with Tupac, talk about poetic justice, and edited all the questions out and made it sound like he was talking about like now shit. Wow. And we promoted for two weeks that on the seven year anniversary of Tupac's death, we're gonna talk to him on the radio. And the station was in a mall, so we put these curtains up that night and shit. Yo, there was niggas outside with candles and stuff, like in like Tupac signs. And everybody thought it was real. 
And they would call it in, like, yo, can we please talk to Pac? Can we please talk to no. And we was asking questions, like, yo, so Pac, man, all that time you was hiding out, yeah, what was you thinking about? Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Because <laughs> these, these were all poetic justice-related questions yeah. and stuff like that. So it all fell in line and worked out. And I'm like, damn it, man, if this was the era of, if, if now, we, if we would have did this five years later, Yo, we would have went down in history like the people who did the slap contest on Hot 97. Cause like, yo, they was they was really they was really excited and overjoyed that night. <laughs> but niggas was calling us all types of names the next Damn. day. But they got over it. They got over it. Yeah. Cause we let them down easily. It's like, okay. yeah, you know. This was their Arsenio Hall interview too, right? No, this was like with some foreign media company that did an interview with Tupac at some point. And a crazy, I downloaded that interview off of Kazaa. Just the, yeah. just, I feel just, like I remember this story as a child, like when I'm in middle school or I something. I feel like I, I remember this, it too, like a motherfucker. Yeah, I remember this story. Oh, but so. I didn't know that was you. That's crazy, man. You a wow. jack of all trades, dog. Yeah, the, man, it's dope if they would have mentioned us by name. The more people could have <laughs> ah. knew. But, you know, but I'll take it. I'll take it. This is know? like around like 2002. Something no, like that, so it was like the seven year anniversary. So Pac died in 96. 96. This had to be like 93, uh, 2003. Something like that. that I remember. Well, I remember something like that. I remember like that. something like that around that time. Word. And everybody would kept promoting it and was like, "Oh my God, Tupac just did an interview," and everybody was talking about that crazy. shit at school. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I think it did. Dog, I, I remember that. Your that, shit that, did that came it was us. Yeah. Head crack, super K, yeah. Kino, dust show. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. Like that was like probably like my defining moment. But we used to do all types of dope stuff. You know, like we had so much power being on at nights and not mm -hmm. being syndicated mm -hmm. because we're just talking to one group of people. So we would get off the air at 10 and we'd be like, yo, listen, if everybody's been riding with us all night, we're going to be in Arlington in like 30 minutes in front of Jack in the Box. We're all black. And we'd go out there and buy everybody jumbo jacks. And she, like, you know, we would just do stuff like that just to like organically mix it up with the people and just be in the flow. And like, I love that because it just allows you to have a relationship with the listeners that sometimes being syndicated, you can't, you kind of got to be generic. Like if people see you, they see you. But when you're on in one city and you could really have an up close and personal relationship with your listeners, it hit different. Like I've never really been a fan of like syndicated radio, even though syndicated radio made me famous mm -hmm. sonically in a lot of cities I didn't live in. But I feel like the stars really need to be the people who live in them cities that really talk the talk and go to that mysterious chicken joint that got weird hours and is not open on Tuesday. You know what I mean? Like, they, who know those true stories? Like, if the mayor in Philly gets shot, nine times I tell you on a syndicated show, you can't talk about mm -hmm. it unless he got shot by a rapper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes syndication loses some of that. And I think that's part of the reason why radio is kind of losing its way because they're trying to, like, find so many cheap ways out and outsourcing and syndicating people and not just paying people with their worth to handle individual markets. Mm -hmm. That's my rant. I like what you said because everybody thinks that syndication is like kingpin, but they don't really touch on the fact that when you get syndicated, it cuts out a lot of the cultural, you know, bri gap that you're uh, bridging with radio. Yeah, I think it's cute when you think that you get paid your base salary times the many amount of markets that you happen to be on. Like, it may change your bonus structure, but it's not like I like and I'm just throwing numbers out there, right? Let's say if you got paid two dollars to do morning radio in Atlanta mm -hmm. and now you pick up Baltimore, you're not necessarily gonna get four dollars because you got Baltimore now. You might get two dollars and fifteen cents because they throw something in your bonus structure to where like if you get number one in this market, then you get that in the third. And and maybe I, at, I at some point it was that. like that. I definitely thought I did too. And so I started working for the place I worked was working at, you know. <laughs> dig, dig. Um, so where does the break come from? Well, like you, you know, you you keeping your head down and you working on your craft and whatnot, and then but you having fun at the same time. And like, how do you how, how do you like this muscle through wanting to be on top? And when does it happen? Uh, I mean, it, it never stops. I don't I don't know when I don't I don't even know what success looks like to be honest with you. Because like oh, wow. a lot, and same thing where like you you feel like you're not where you want to be. There's a lot of people look at you and be like, man, Jack Thrill out here doing it. You know, Fifty Cent. You know, like you know, he smashed a porn star too. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you know, people want to live your life. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I I've never felt like I made it. Even when I, like when I first, even when I was working at Motown Records, my grandmother was so fucking proud of me. I'm like, proud of you. I'm just thinking about <laughs> it now. Like, yeah, damn. <laughs> like, but I felt there was always more, and yeah. then more became, I run a street team company and I promote for all these different companies. Mm. But I always felt that there was more. Mm. Then I ended up working for EMI and then I, but, but 
but the industry is changing because people are bootlegging and downloading. There's not going to be a lot of money here after a while. Mm -hmm. And then I got in the radio, and then it's like, damn, man, I'm on the radio. I must be dead. You know, there's, That's no, how you there's no way I'm on the radio. Mm -hmm. wow. I didn't go to school for this shit. And me and my homies made a fake tape and got on the radio. This shit ain't Get supposed to happen. Wow. This ain't fluke? supposed to huh? A fluke? Preparation meet an opportunity. Because mm -hmm. one thing that I was good. good. Huh? You guys were good by accident. I mean, I think we were good by accident, but also too, like going back to the ayahuasca retreat stuff, one thing it told me is like, I, you know, people talk about time travel and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Time is a line. That's why they call it a timeline. Everybody okay. in this room, they've already lived, you've already died. It's already all happened. What you could do is you could meditate and you could talk and communicate to your younger self mm. to prepare yourself for shit that you'll have to deal with when you're older. I don't know why I was four years old watching Entertainment Tonight. I don't fucking know why. I should have been watching cartoons. But my older self told me, hey, man, know these white people. Mm. This might come in handy. Dish Nation. Um, yo. Come on, inner child. You putting me on right now, bro. <laughs> yo, man. Like, you're, making, you're answering a lot of questions yeah. for me. There, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that we don't understand about how our minds work. How the universe mm. works. And it's how, all preparing you. Yeah. You don't even know. Like, it's all preparing you. You don't even know. Yeah, it's, I think the best example of it is that movie Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. yeah they thought yeah. this nigga was cheating. But nah, like, everything that prepared him to win was things that he dealt with in his real life. So as you sit in your adult life, sometimes you got to close your eyes, turn your mm. phone off, and just, like, really just meditate and just, like, try to communicate with your younger self just to mentally prepare for yourself. Man, we can get so deep with this shit, man. Like, anybody watching the show, Google dimension jumping. Mm. It's a whole thing. And it's scary because if you start doing it, your life will change. And you, not everybody wants their life to completely change. And you have to be prepared for that when it does. I haven't fully even dove, dove into it because I don't want to come home one day and I have four daughters instead of four sons. You know, but it's real. You know, there's been times where I've like limped into Sway in the morning, but before I went, well, like, before I went in, I asked for the universe to give me the healthiest version of myself so I could walk in there and do this freestyle with no problem. And it gave it to me. Got in the cab, limped back to my Airbnb because I was in pain, because right? I had this chronic ankle issue. But man, the mind and the shit that we are capable of as people is fucking fascinating. And I think we only know like 3% of what we're capable of pulling off because we're so distracted because we think technology is phones and shit. The technology is learning what your brain, brain. can do. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Chew the more you know, Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any For part real? of your journey that you, that you think so far you would change or? I wouldn't change anything. I feel like everything was, happened the way it was supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Like, Oh man, what if I stayed with the night show? And I, because I was, well, I was having the most fun because mm -hmm. I'm literally doing radio with my best friends, but I don't know if I would have ascended as fast or if the company would have risked putting us three on in the morning because there's a lot of like companies that feel like we have to put a famous person on in the morning mm -hmm. because everyone knows that famous person and it, it's cool and it works, but it's also lazy. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of talented people who are doing midday shifts that don't tell jokes, haven't been in a movie, and don't make music, mm -hmm. and they deserve that shot. But, I, you know, I, I wouldn't change nothing, man. Like, yo, you know, I, I ended up doing oh, everything dude. that I wanted to do, and now I'm having this second childhood where I'm out here, like, hanging out way past my bedtime on a school night doing stand-up, which is scary and some shit I thought I never would do. And why is uh, stand-up scary for you? Because um, it's really easy to memorize words that rhyme, <laughs> and jokes are jokes, and not everybody finds everything funny. Because mm -hmm. there's some people that people think are hilarious, and there's some people, well, I don't fucking get it. Then there's yeah. that. <laughs> then there's that. You you 100% right. Mm -hmm. And so you you still get uh, like super nervous at this particular point yeah. in your stand-up career? I did my first 10-minute set about a week ago. How was that? Wow. It was dope. Like, I smashed, right? Dog, and you a natural. You do this shit all the time on the radio. Well, thank you for like believing in me. But there's sometimes I think you have to have just a a little bit of nervousness, bit of nervousness just so you, you know you alive. Yeah, it keeps you real with the situation. Yeah, because I think if you get too nonchalant with certain things, mm -hmm. you go in there and you ain't prepared for, the, for the scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, crack. What about uh, when you performing as an artist, like doing music and your songs and stuff? Is you get nervous for that, or you think that's easier than doing stand up? Definitely easier. Definitely easier. I do get a smidge nervous because sometimes, depending where you're rocking at. 
if it's like a mixed room, right? Mm. Because the musical landscape is all over the place right now. Yeah. Know? You'll have somebody rapping about what they pussy can do, mm -hmm. and then you rapping about investing and property and stuff like that. <laughs> like everything ain't always for That's every room. That's true. That's true. I remember one time, I, like me and my homies, the, the, our group, the Bodega Brothers, man, we opened up for Rick Ross in Dallas, and like, yo, I'm on stage with a shirt that said "Never Sold Dope," and <laughs> like Rick Ross. Oh my god, raps. this was definitely your audience. It's, yo, <laughs> My man was like, especially that year, was exclusively rapping about the sale and distribution of cocaine. There was yep. chicks in the audience who had beards like Rick Ross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The fandom was on that high of a level. And um, and I ended up like battling with someone in the crowd who was just like, I, you know, he was like, I didn't like his energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I he was like kind of heckling and shit. And mm -hmm. like, I took my focus off the whole show just to focus on this one motherfucker that was being extra. Shout out to Pee High. Uh, it was be extra in the crowd. However, um, sometimes you could get distracted and you were doing fine. It's almost like how like, you know, 100 people could tell you or 99 people could tell you, Yo, you're doing great, you're killing shit. But that one person who got something fucked up to say, you're going to focus and zero in on that. Let that ruin your day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like the only really time I had like a really bad go at it. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at the video of it later, I was like, damn. These niggas was actually into what we were doing. Yeah. And yeah. I let my man, I let that one person take me off my shit. You know? Mm -hmm. So that was really, yeah, really it. But like, yeah, I get nervous because I care. I'm curious, how do yeah. you prepare your, your your content for comedy? Like, what do you? Um, you, you write, so like, what I used to do, I used to just write one sentence down. And that one sentence was like the whole joke and premise to me. Mm -hmm. But then I started going to a writing class where it taught me how to take that one sentence and flesh it out into a full set because I didn't know how to write. I just knew like, yo, I know this one sentence is funny and the premise that exists in this sentence is funny, but okay, how do I flesh that out? Mm. So it is a, a work in progress too. Cause like, I mean, I'm still not, I'm not on Jack's level, but I'm working, right? So oh, you, you, you passed me, bro. <laughs> get out of town. Like, you, like Martin Lawrence didn't art, like, like <laughs> Martin Bashir might ask me to go on tour, but not Martin Lawrence, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, because like, you know, you still got to like work on that stuff, like where it's like, ah, oh, man, there's too many words in this joke. Let me economize it, make it easier to digest. Mm -hmm. So I'm still like working certain things out, but I'm excited about the journey. Mm -hmm. I feel like I only had one off night so far, like, you know, in this comedy space. And it's like, I think everybody has to have that off night. So, you know, of what course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That, that, that's when you know you alive when, you know, you got a room full of people booing the shit out your ass. <laughs> Yeah, it I ain't didn't... nothing like that. It's like somebody putting that thing, that the defibrillator on your chest. <laughs> Woo! Shit! <laughs> Sometimes they just boo you with their silence. Uh, <laughs> you, know hey, what you, you know, you know what's funny about that? People, uh, a, a lot of my comedian friends uh, say that they they rather that that's worse than getting booed is the whole silent treatment. I'd prefer. I, I've been booed so many times in my life. What? Yeah. Why? Hell yeah. Man, I, I was one of the heavyweight boot champions of Atlanta <laughs> really? back in 03, 04, 05, and a little bit of 06 and whatnot. But I would come back the next night like it wasn't shit. Word. You know what I'm saying? And, until you're going to have good nights, you're going to have bad nights. Good nights, bad nights, good nights, bad nights. But that's how you find out what's really funny. True. You know true. what I'm saying? And, and so you just constantly editing and... You know, just figuring that shit out. You got to work until it works. There's really no blueprint to it. But I love what you was talking about just now because that's what everybody needs to do that wants to do it too is find out the, the fundamentals and, you know, take a class and everything and some structure. Yeah. But then that goes, uh, you got to also align that up with some consistency and commitment. And some people you could trust that you could bounce ideas off mm. of to be like, yo, yeah, that shit ain't funny, fam. You yeah. Know? yeah. Or like, yo, what if you said it like this? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, especially like amongst us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes we feel like we're in competition with each other when we really should be building with each other to like, you know, make That's each other word. dope. That's Steel sharp word. and still, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh like so in this class that I took, I got a crew of people I go hang out, hit these open mics with. And it's okay. cool to have adult friends that I, that don't rap. Mm. Right? <laughs> that shit's awesome. It's a whole <laughs> dimension of life. Yeah, like I got like rap friends I go hang out with, mm. and I got friends that don't rap and like to drink. Mm. And I like to watch them get drunk. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's you got a plan on uh, handling hecklers from now on? Because you got to get um, more No, I'm out. definitely still going to give it to the hecklers because, like, yo, <laughs> when you watch a great comedian handle a heckler well, like, shout out to my man LeVar. I watched Oh, him, LeVar Walker, yeah. Yo, I watched him extract a person's soul. Yeah, oh, uh, it's an like, art. 
in an audience one time, and it was a beautiful thing. And even when you look at Vintage DL, when he used to do Comic View and all Amazing. that. Amazing. It's like, yo, I don't even want to hear your jokes, fam. Talk about that nigga in the third row. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the marksman. Um, yeah, but it's weird, because like, I don't like being snapped on, but I do like rebuttaling. Mm. You know what I mean? Which is like why I used to like battle rap so much. Not the battle rap when like I know I'm gonna battle you in three months and I have like a week to like look up your ancestry.com and shit. But like mm -hmm. that freestyle shit where like you just said something to me and I like just like boomerang some shit right back to you. Mm -hmm. I love that shit because like I used to get snapped on a lot. So it made my defenses like barely high. Wow. But yeah, but like I'm sensitive, so I don't like getting snapped on. I I, I like getting snapped on. Um I think that it's funny to me. And it, Cause I'm always I'm I'm always looking for some shit that you saying about me. I'm like, damn, yeah, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in my shit. Okay, cause okay. This, this cause this is kind of like my joke since you saying it about me. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna need that. Yeah, I'm taking all that shit. You get exclusive rights because you are the source material. It's like if a nigga write a biography about you, it's my story. I, it's I, I my deserve story. the rights. Yeah, exactly. Intellectual yeah, yeah. property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a, what um uh my um. That's a, that's how I look at people will be, uh, like making me the butter jokes and shit like that. I don't take it personally at all, and everything. Oh, uh, I I think that uh, that's one of my superpowers. Fifty used to say that you know you can't really say anything about Jack Dwiller because he's bulletproof. Cause that's when you just you know what I'm saying comfortable with yourself all the way around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I'm I I, I love a good eye joke. <laughs> I I love a good fat joke or. Just I'm trying to look. I'm looking for something that's crazy. I get pissed off with somebody saying some lazy ass shit that they heard somebody else say, or you know what I'm saying. Like, what is the last one stalking. you heard that like really floored you? It was like, damn, that was new. I ain't heard that one before. Ah, I don't. Let me see. Um, DC Young Fly, and D he's a Jedi. <laughs> he's a Jedi. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> He, he was saying that the battery was low on my good eye. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, because it was red, it was real red on this episode of Wild and <laughs> And he said, your battery getting no good. Say, somebody get a charger for Jack Eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, it, it's hard to bounce back from that one. And yeah, 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 yeah. That's that needs to be in your book. Yes, you yeah. Know? He's a, he's a, he's amazing with it. Carlos is oh, he's crazy with it too. Yeah, I mean, like, steel sharp is steel, yeah. man. Like, anytime you in, like, a group of creators and they cook it up. Like, I remember, like, like uh, DC Young Fly was, like, the bane of my existence on the episode of Wild It Out that I did. Because, like, I did, like, three different things, right? Mm -hmm. And they do that, uh, I think it's called Joking Off or whatever. Like, yeah. Where, like, yeah. And, like, so they put me up against DC. And everything he said was really funny and everything I said was just really mean. <laughs> so yeah, like, so yeah. It, instead of people laughing, everybody was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, boy, listen, you're never going to win going shit. against DC. Yeah, I learned that in real time. You, you, but hold on, let me tell you, you know, you know what's uh, one of the things that DC got, man, DC has mastered the art of just walking and just being himself. Mm -hmm. He ain't even got to do nothing crazy at all, and motherfuckers just start busting out laughing. So you you lost before you started anyway. Yeah, but I was confident because I believed in myself. But mm -hmm. but, but you, you I probably wasn't smiling. I, I you probably wasn't smiling. You probably was looking mad in the motherfucker. I wasn't mad because I knew what it was. I'm like, well, damn, they got me fighting. It's like when you play Punch Out, yeah. and if you never played it before, and you yeah. go straight to Mike Tyson using the code and shit, mm -hmm. it's like, fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, yeah. uh, but I made up for it in the rap shit at the yeah. end. Okay. Like, that, that shit, yeah, that's that's shit. what you excel yeah, at right like, there. Yeah, that's yeah. what I came for. Like, yeah, it was yeah. Like, like, damn, you threw me in this extra shit. Like, I only came to run the 400 and the, uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't come to do shot put. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I've I definitely uh, fucked up some, some, uh, some, definitely some games where I was going a little bit too hard and, and uh, in the jugular zone and whatnot. Like, damn, Jack, calm the fuck down. And I had got voted to be the most violent person on Wild and Out and shit by accident. <laughs> You know, Sometimes you bring a gun to a paintball fight. Yeah. Know, it is like, oh shit, I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Jack, are you okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I, just, <laughs> I thought this was this, this wilding out. It ain't Def Comedy Jam. You gotta, you know, you gotta kind of tone it down and make it fun. Right. You gotta make, you gotta make, make it fun. You don't want nobody leaving a suicide note in their dressing exactly. room. Exactly. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah, my shit be like a little bit too goddamn <laughs> dark sometimes. That's why your parents <laughs> left. <laughs> exactly. I do some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it was this one thing I had said on while and now about. I forget. It was a. It was just like a bad discharge joke. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it was so fucking nasty to everybody that was on the set. Was just like, oh, uh, and people in the audience were like, oh. Uh. So it, it was a, it was a, it was like a unanimous thing that it was so fucking nasty. It was disgusting, and I'm like, damn. I ain't gonna make the fucking cut on this shit. But they end up making the show. Say what? They made the show and they made everybody that was saying the shit that they that said, ugh, so like bust out laughing. Um, and the joke oh, went over. The power of the edits. The power wow, of the edits. Yeah. Man, listen. Yeah. Gosh, I, I can't love TV. what the fuck that shit was, but that shit was funny as fuck. But yeah, man, what you got going on right now, bro? So listen, man, I got this variety show thing I do called Results May Vary. It's a mm -hmm. mixture of comedy, hip hop, and a game show. Like if you put them all in a blender, mm -hmm. it's a vibe. Uh, we got one coming up, but by the time this airs, it'll already happen. Okay. But we did the first one in September. T.I. came through as a pop-up. It was dope. Sold out two shows, and we didn't even tell them that anybody special was coming. They just came on the grizz of it. So People fuck with you, though, bro. Oh. Your movie I, premieres be amazing, too. Yeah, you still I mean, do that? Um, when they get the call, you know, like people's budgets are a little off right now, right and strike, you know, still happening. Uh, yeah, like, everybody, everybody's like trying to like, you know, look in the couch cushions for money these days. So yeah, it, it, it's kind of crazy, but you know, so there's that, I got a new single out right now called Buck Wild featuring Method Man and Cool Ooh. Keith. Oh and, um, shit. That record is out of here. We just cracked a hundred thousand, um, plays on Spotify. Come on. So that means I'll make $5. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Definitely. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awful. About 125. Oh, yeah. I wish more people believed in title, but you know, because they pay more. Yeah. You know, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's that. So and then also um on tour with Cool Keith right now. Uh, we're gonna be in New York mid-November. Okay. Um, and just really just trying to hit more of these mics and just, you know, just do this comedy thing, mm -hmm. do this, do this music thing, uh, but taking the acting more seriously. Uh, I may or may not have just shot a movie scene a week or two ago. You know what I mean? Um, depends when this airs. The strike was over when we shot it. Uh, the, uh, uh, the the writer's strike is over, but the actor's strike is still on? Yeah, depends okay. when this airs. But gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry, my, my, my bad. Yeah. We may, <laughs> okay. have, we may have talked about a movie, but Jeez. I'm just outside doing it all, man. Like, yeah. yo, like, like cutting the anchor that had me tethered on the first half of my day has freed me up to be a human again wow. mm -hmm. in a way that I haven't been able to be in a long time. Okay. Like, yo, I got to take my kids to school mm -hmm. and they're just as terrible in the morning as my wife told me they were. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought she was making the shit up. It's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. fucking true. But you can experience it now. I get to experience it. It's like, okay, yeah, I get it. I, that's why you had that look in your face when I come home. I get it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to be able to experience just those little milestones that like having your head down and working for the master, mm -hmm. um, you know, took away from me you know like mm. I, get, I get to go back and experience that and live it again and then and just be able to have fun man i'm so much freer because yeah. like yeah when you work for money money's always going to be your motivation to do things but when mm -hmm. you work for the intent of what you're doing it it means more when everything comes through mm -hmm. yeah you know Pro I mean? a prostitute told me that hey hey, oh, man, oh, oh, gosh. Look him. You know what? <laughs> hey did, did you ever like you know what i'm saying deliver that message i needed you to deliver to the brat uh, I feel like I did it, and she laughed, okay. like, but not like laughed at you, like ha ha, like like she laughed because I I think you probably also tried to deliver that message in person a couple of times. Yes, I did. Yeah, and, and you see where she ended up, right? Yeah, like, I saw her. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, she might have been pregnant when I gave her the message. You know gotcha. what I mean? So it seemed like that train had already left the station, and gotcha. it'd be hard to get it to go backwards and come back. Okay, so yeah. it's over for us then. Huh? Mm. I mean, yeah, unless something crazy happens, and I like them together, man. I, I do too. And you know, you want me to tell you some some wild shit? What's that? I tried to holler at um, what's her name? Judy, Judy. too. Okay. Like back <laughs> back in seven, she came to my show, party and bullshit. I used to have a show called Party and Bullshit in Atlanta, mm. in um New York, and whatnot. And she was a guest on that show, and uh, I, you know, of course, I had like thirty female co-hosts on there at the time. And so she, in her mind, she think I'm fucking all the bitches and then stuff. So, so I'm kicking it to her. And then she had called me like, what do you want from me? Tell me, what do you want? I'm like, what you, I'm, I'm trying to holler at you. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And she said, nah, you got too many girls around you and blah, 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 blah. And then Future, I see uh, her get on that, that uh, her and the brat hook up mm -hmm. and whatnot. I was like, damn. I, I didn't try to holler at both of these girls in two different, and these motherfuckers didn't found each other. <laughs> I think it was something about my advances <laughs> that brought these <laughs> ladies together. You're kind of like the relationship whisperer. Yeah, and, mm. and, and, and keep in mind, you know that you know that clip that I had sent you with uh, me uh, talking about getting Brett pregnant. Mm. This was back in 2013. Yo, I called it. 
It seems like you have a type. You should actually holler at Queen Latifah and just oh go <laughs> trifecta. <laughs> oh, <of> shit. <laughs> Yo, man, reach for the stars. It's a pattern. In football, they call that a two-point conversion. Jesus. <laughs> hey, guys. I- Oh, let, let, let everybody get one more. Okay, everybody got a question for you, Ben, for you. Because I, I know you got to go do some more famous shit. So you don't miss radio? I do miss it. Okay. Because I miss the people. You back on Dish, though, right? I never left. Okay. They yeah. have to kill me off TV, that show. But that's TV, right? That's, that's TV. not radio. Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was a radio. Uh. So it, it started with the presentation that it was radio shows on TV. Mm-hmm. But then when you started having non-radio people on it, kind of evolved into something else. Like, hey, Porsche ain't on the radio. Right. She's up here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. So it, it, it morphed from what it was in season one to where we are in season 12 now. So, yeah, now I'm still doing Dish Nation. Love doing that. Um, everybody over there is dope. But I, I miss the people that I would talk to mm-hmm. through the radio mm-hmm. more than I miss radio and the politics of it. Because mm-hmm. when you come up there and you like passionate, you like music and you like things that make sense, radio sucks. Because mm. they do a lot of shit that don't make sense. And then wonder why radio's dying. Yeah. It's like, yo, read the signs, read the room. Uh, I got a question for you too. I um, once seen you say you think doing radio uh, hurt your music career. Do mm-hmm. you think that now that you're not doing radio right now, it's the perfect time to get back doing your music? Well, yeah. I know you said you got your new stuff going on, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. You think that you can kick down this door now that you're not doing radio anymore? I think it'll be a smidge easier. I think there's probably a company that probably wouldn't play my music, but the um, it allows me to go on tours more mm-hmm. and not necessarily be tethered Digital to fans. like a place that I got to be Five days a week, because a lot of things are so political. Like, if you're on, if you work for this company, mm-hmm. there's certain stations that won't play you because you're on the competition mm-hmm. station, yeah, and I think me. that's so stupid. Because I remember even on my show, Young Jock got some of the biggest records that came off that first mm-hmm. album, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there was situations where they're like, "Yo, why are you playing Young Jock's song? You know, he's on the same time you are." So. So what you're trying to tell me, Mr. Smart Radio Man, mm-hmm. is because I played It's Going Down, niggas is going to tune out and then go to the other station right. because he's over there talking. You stupid fuck. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yo, a joint is a joint, a jam is a jam. Yeah. You hold them hostage mm-hmm. with your content. Yeah. People are so smart, they retarded. Keep your heart, yeah. three stacks. Yeah. Keep, Keep your, your heart. heart. Your heart. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, this frees me up a little bit more to, like, run full speed yeah. and, mm-hmm. you know, and work different pockets. Because, like, now the game is playlists more so than radio, you right. know what yeah. I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, getting your song played is great, mm-hmm. but are you really making those kind of joints? Because, like, I'm not talking about what my pussy can do. It's a different type of playlist, though. I'm pretty sure, um, you know, every record you got is going to be a playlist that fit that record. Absolutely. So that's why, like, I try to diversify and make different types of joints. So, like, oh, you just make boom bap. Like, no, I got that. I got records for the chicks. I got an Afro Beats record. Mm-hmm. I got shit you can do yoga to. I got records you can fire taxes to. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you gotta have a diverse palette. Like, why be the twelve box of crowns when you could be the two hundred forty six box? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have have four blues in there. That's more yeah. colors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like colors. You're a really big philanthropist and big on community service. Like, which out of all the things you've done are you most proud of doing when it comes to helping the community? Um, just showing up when people throw the bad signal up, mm-hmm. man. Like, anytime there's something for kids or, like, go talking to schools and stuff like that, man, it's nothing. Like, I, I'm there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of relationships that I still have to this day because of, like, a kid I came and spoke to. I remember one time I went to, um, I think it was Onyx, and I was uh, I was getting a lap dance, and the girl that was giving me a lap dance is like, hey, you came and spoke at my school. Wait a minute, Jesus. And I was like, I probably didn't speak long enough. Oh, oh my gosh. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> she remembered that. You know what I mean? And she remembered the things I said there that day. Like, hey, man, you could do anything you put your mind to. You could so start your she own was business. And she did. And you was, she was motivating. You was yeah, motivated. like I was looking, I was reading her back tattoos while she was twerking on me. And then she turned around, looked there, like, hey, you know, at one point in time, you came and spoke at my school. And I was like, where? How long ago was this? And she's like, it was about eight years ago. It's like, where? What did I say? She's like, yo, 
you can start your own business and you can use your mind <laughs> to make whatever money you want to make in life. You just got to just, you know, just be good at it, work hard. And here I am working. I'm like, okay, that's what's up. That's tantric. So Only got working. one dance. I didn't do a second one. It, felt, it, it made it weird. It made it weird. Oh, man. So did you, uh, $100 later? No, no, no. Like, I like I hate strip clubs. Oh, Me too. No, yeah. no, no. Yo, no. Um, there was what I... Me and my friends referred to as the Vegas incident, and that was like my last time. Really oh my rich. god! Mm. Yo, like I spent the house always wins every time. Every time. Every oh. That's the time. that's the reason why. That's the only reason why. Otherwise, hey, it's a, a wonderful place to meet people. <laughs> it is of all different walks of life. Yes. I met a British Puerto Rican. Mm. Uh, wow, <laughs> that accent was wild. Yes, do it. <laughs> but yeah, man, just yo talking to the kids, man. Like that, okay. that's that's my thing, man. Cause like a lot of times I feel like parents be absentee mm -hmm. and they don't have nobody to talk to them and tell them how shit really is. I remember I used to go to schools and be like, yo, some of y'all gonna go to jail. I mean, it's a reality. It's a truth. You know it's the truth. ones. It's it's a, a, it's a, a, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be real. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, like, don't be that one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, figure it out, move right. Then there's that. Yep, yep, one hundred percent. Hey, do your kids are they interested in being in a business? Um, in various degrees. Like my oldest son, he's like you know he's just fire with a camera, be doing edits, doing like sneaker related content and stuff like that. My eleven year old, he gonna be like a swami or something. Yeah. You're like this dude is a magical kid. Like I feel like he sees dead people. Like he's just an interesting guy. Like all these weird abilities that I have that I have to meditate to do. He just has it. Like this kid is a rainbow kid. Mm. Uh then my eight year old, well he's nine now, I already got bail money set aside for him. Oh. <laughs> it is what it is. You know your kids. <laughs> you know your kids. Just like you know, like how could I tell a group of kids one of y'all gonna go to jail and you, and you don't see it in your own kids. Yeah. I know what it is. Yo my man has been missing a front tooth <laughs> oh since the fucking God. summer. Like he got the look. <laughs> he got the look. Like, yo, who did it? And they pointed the kid missing the tooth. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's going to be him, man. Just don't put those that silver teeth in his mouth. I'm not going to put don't the put silver, the silver teeth. teeth in his mouth. I refuse. Like, all the bad kids got silver teeth. All of them, because they, their parents don't Cavities. talk to them long enough. And then I got a five-year-old who, um, I don't know, man. I'm just going to stay in shape so we can fight later. Because he gives me the worst times. Like, yo, he be stomping. Like, I... Like, he, I told him to do something yesterday. He was pissed off about it. He held up an L. Wow. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, I wish I could find something soft enough to hit you with right now. <laughs> What's the best part of being a father, man? Um, being a father. All of it. Because every experience I have with each one of my kids is different. Mm -hmm. Like, when it was my oldest, I raised him since he was three. So you've been with me. Mm -hmm. So it was like Adam Sandler and Big Daddy. Because even when he's three, I talked to him like he's 18. So I talked mm -hmm. to him tough. You know what I'm saying? He ain't never had no problems. His biggest fear is disappointing me. Mm -hmm. Crazy thing, going back to the dog thing, I have never seen my oldest cry as a double-digit human, right? He was crying when we went to go see my dog in the, uh, at the hospital because it, I felt like it was my fault what happened happened. And I still feel like it was my fault what happened happened, right? But he loved me so much that... He felt like it was his fault because he didn't come home. Oh. He went to his girlfriend's house instead. You know what I mean? So his thing is if like- If I went with that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Word, and like- and, and, I should have been there for you. <laughs> yeah. I should have been there for you, Lucy. Yo, like, and so for him to want to catch that bullet for me when it is definitely my fault, yeah. man, like, yo, man, I love that kid to the moon yeah. and back. And like, I know that's the kind of love he has for me. He never want to yeah. disappoint me. So the greatest part is just like being there and just experiencing everything that everybody is. Like my 11 year old, he's a space cadet. He's the worst getting dressed in the morning. My eight year old, this kid is insane. Um, but yo, like crazy thing, like we had to flee so many places. Like when we hear a kid cry, and I look, and I see him coming through fast. And I'm like, all right, Kumba Club's getting fired. <laughs> yo, 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 because yo, right now. Yo, I call him ten minutes or less because if you fuck with him, he gonna get back at you in ten minutes or less. Wow. Like he may not like hit you back or get back at you right then and there. He gonna step away for a second. He gonna figure it out, and then he gonna come back and do something, and we on the move. And the crazy shit is like. I was the same way as a kid, so like I get it. But all my kids don't got it. He got that part of me. Mm. My my 11-year-old got the optimism 
Mm -hmm. My 23 year old got the hustle and grind. Like, I'm proud of him. Like, I went to one semester of college. He graduates, my oldest graduates in like a month or two. I'm I'm amazed. Congratulations. And my five year old, let's go try to keep him alive. (laughs) I named him after my favorite boxer, and he gives me the toughest time. His name is Tyson. Tyson Peace. He's not peaceful. Wow. He's not peaceful. You you had did you get you ever met Tyson? Yeah, yeah. You did you tell him that? No, I haven't met him since I had the kid. Got you. Um, and because the first time I met him, I said something equally dumb. So I had to like because the very first time I met him, I met him at a a, a Yale Haiti benefit. This is like when Haiti had a ba- Haiti had a bad earthquake. So it was like me, Ricky, and a bunch of other people. We went down to Florida. They was like had different celebrities man in the phones and shit. So we was part of that crew. And I ran into Mike Tyson, and I've been wanting to meet this kid, this guy, my whole life. And I walked up to Mike Tyson and I said, yo, I use you a lot in fight night. <laughs> <laughs> you hit him with a video game? <laughs> because it was like, so honest. Oh, it, so it was so honest. Like, yeah. like, like, yeah. I didn't want to come in filled. with, yeah, like, how does it feel to be the champ? Or like, yeah. you know, like, yo. Yeah. I'm not mad at that, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really not mad at that. Word. And then I ran into him again at, uh, at Comic-Con, and yeah. we had a, a better conversation. And then I ran into him another time in Vegas, but he was just, like, signing stuff. So it was, like, real stick and move. We took some pictures mm. and kept it pushing, man. But it, it's dope. They say don't meet your heroes, but sometimes it's cool when you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think I've, I, I've had a bad experience with a celebrity before. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Who was it? Uh, <laughs> Google it. <laughs> and it's not someone we talked about earlier. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right, yeah that, that was it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that was it. Outside of that, but okay. yeah, I think I think that we're in a good space now. He didn't block me. Yeah, so that's a good sign, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes because yeah. like yeah, so you, they don't block you, so they can see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, one hundred percent. I'm still scared. Hey, <laughs> 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 I want to be friends. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to say to New Jack Thriller City, man, before we uh, get out of here, my boy? Hey, yo, man, continue to support my homie right here in his platform and his amazing crew right here, man. Like, the energy has been love. You know, shout out to the DJ, shout out to everybody you can't see behind. It's like 27 people on the other side of the camera. <laughs> get out of here. Yo, it's lit. It's oh, lit. man. But, uh, yo, man, be sure you follow me on all social media, H-E-A-D-K-R-A-C-K. If you fuck with the music, yo, uh, it has been statistically proven that people that listen to my music live five days longer than people that listen to other stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm on that Spotify. I'm on that iTunes Music. I'm on Deezer. I'm on Napster. I'm on SoundCloud. Napster. Yeah, yo, Napster paid the second most out of everybody. Hold on, Napster's still mm-hmm. around? Yeah. Yeah, but see, still... Napster's uh, subscriptions are high as crap. That's why they uh, give us so much money back. Yeah, because they're like big overseas. We just get Spotify and all that other stuff thrown down our throat. But yeah, Got like, you. yeah, Napster wow. out here paying what they're wearing. But okay. I don't know, I've heard not Nan American be like, yeah, we pull up Napster, Napster and do Bluetooth. Like, nah, it's always the other stuff. But it is what it is, man. But yo, follow me on all those platforms. Tap on in and also uh, hit me on that YouTube as well. But well, there it is, man. Yo, y'all give it up for here. Crack one more time. Let's take some pictures. Yeah. We'll see you next time. New Jack Thriller City. Let's go. Yeah. We will. 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 We will